Kia ora koutou and welcome to Ōtatahi City Voices, where we listen to Ōtatahi during the COVID-19 pandemic by interviewing city makers and community leaders. We're interested in hearing from a diversity of voices about what people have discovered when we were under lockdown and how it has either influenced or galvanised their vision for Ōtatahi Christchurch. I'm Jessica Halliday. I'm the director of Te Pūtahi Centre for Architecture and City Making. And today I'm talking with Dr. Eru Era Tarina, a social innovator. Tana koe, Eru Era, and thank you. Welcome for being, um, thank you for being part of Ōtatahi City Voices. And it would be wonderful if you could start us off by introducing yourself, telling us what you do and what your passion is. O oh, tēnā koutou, uh, ka rere nei a mihi ka koutou katoa uh, te iwi whakarongo mai ana, uh, ko iru ira tārena tōku ingoa. Mā ngā iwi ngai tau ngāti prau te whānau apanui, uh, nō ngai tua hurere ngāti hui kai uh, ngāti ira ke uki kone. Uh, so kia ora, my name's uh, Iru Ira. Um, my main whakapapa is local, uh, so I'm from Tuahiwi uh, and uh, Port Liwi and uh, over the hill. Ngāti ira kehu, so um, my grandmother was a a niho niho, uh, part of the Solomon Fano, where Hiwi and my grandfather Opawa um, was a sterling from uh, down Awarua, Orakaparima, and uh, Puketeraki. So, um, sort of bit of the north, northern Ngaitahu Whakapapa, and bit of the southern. And um, yes, I work for uh, Tupuna Taraki, which is like a Ngaitahu social innovation lab uh, looking at the future and really focusing around equity for Māori. Uh, and education, employment, and income uh, for all Māori and Ngaitahu and the Takiwa by 2040. Kia ora. So, what part of the region or the city were you in lockdown in back in oh, March and April? I live in uh, Hillsborough, so um, I like being closely nestled to the ocean, the harbour, uh, and the hills. Uh, um, so, uh, yeah, southeast is kind of my sweet spot and uh, you've been enjoying it immensely. So what have you discovered or learnt about our city or about your community during lockdown? Um, I've got four kids so pretty much we've explored every nook and cranny and so what I found is some uh, really awesome trails that we never knew existed and both bike trails because kids hate walking uh, um, and then sort of uh, yeah, a bit of trekking and hiking in the Port Hills, so it's been fun. I always get out and about, um, but it's been lovely getting out and about with the Fano. And then also um, because you're doing, sometimes doing it once or twice a day <laughs> when the weather was a bit warmer, um, just finding all these nice hidden spots in the hills, um, yeah, with the bottom of a valley or a little short walk uh, or some really lovely ridgeline tracks that. Um, yeah, didn't know existed before and you're just going how did I never discover this previously but um, despite that yeah had a good time exploring our little takiwa. Yeah I have to say that um, that opportunity to more intimately discover the your close neighborhood was really one of the major benefits of of that time. It's still it's really wonderful to hear that that's something you discovered. So what about that time surprised you? Um, I'm not sure if there was a major surprise. I mean, really, um, if I if I think big picture, it's accelerated a whole bunch of things that were on the horizon, and at a small, you know, level in terms of myself, you know, I think it was kind of like fast forwarding three or four years into the future. So. Um, probably trends and tools and digital devices and things that I've sort of always had in my periphery suddenly became front and center. So yeah, in a week we're all working remotely. We're all on Slack and Monday.com and hui zui everywhere and yeah, Google jam boards. And so I think well, not so much a surprise, but a pleasant surprise was, you know, really evolving our practice in terms of work and connection with Fano and, and using the, the full benefits of mostly digital tools that have been around for years, 
but um, really um, uh, being able to capitalize on, on them. And probably the big thing for me was no travel. Uh, I just loved not having to get up at 5 a.m., rush off for a red-eye flight to somewhere, and uh, realizing just how much time was wasted in cars and planes trying to get to somewhere as opposed to just doing stuff. So being able to connect with people digitally has been fantastic. Uh, I think. And do you think that that will continue to be part of how you work and live? Yeah, it's my mission and everyone I work with, we're all the same. So I, I suppose, you know, in terms of our bigger picture view is, you know, there's the opportunity to return to BAU or the opportunity to adapt and transform and become something better and stronger. And so as a country, you know, we've got that opportunity, sort of two options. And I think as individuals, we sort of got that, okay, do we slot back into working way too much and wasting lots of time in the office? Or do we evolve and adapt into something where um, you know, we do have a better balance, but we can blend the strengths of time for reflection and quiet at home and to write uh, um, versus also needing to facilitate and engage and connect with people is how do we get that balance so we're not locked into old ways of doing things just because that's the, the norm so what are your is that is would that accurately describe your post lockdown fears or what you're most worried about like missing this yeah. opportunity to move away from BAU? Well, when you look at, if I look at a big picture, we already had um, plenty of issues before COVID. And so really uh, COVID itself in terms of the economic shock is, is just uh, highlighting existing issues we had in terms of inequality. And so for many, the goal is to return back to normal where for other communities, in particular, when you look at Māori, that, that wasn't such a great proposition, you know? <laughs> yeah, we were looking at growing inequality. So what's there to like about that? And, and so I think the crisis has opened the opportunity for alternative futures and futures that are transformational. And, and I think that's the, the opportunity that lays before us, is well, how do we capitalise on that? and not uh, snap back to normal. So this next question then, I hope you'll expand on that. What does this experience lead you to hope or dream, and specifically for Ōtātahi Christchurch? Um, I think as a nation, you kind of had, you know, a flip in values, and it's been fascinating for all of us watching, you know, the mode of leadership that comes from Aotearoa, uh, this is the United States. <laughs> and, and, you know, really when you boil down, there are values. They go, well, you know, we chose to, to monarchy uh, each other and to look after each other and to put individual um, rights and privileges uh, secondary to collective common good. And, and I think we've done fabulous at that. And um, we've also seen the inverse, you know, the opposite of what that looks like. So I think we've got these kind of polarities that are happening internationally. So my hope would be that we can extend that value of manakitanga for all and those catchphrases of he waka eke noa, so that it's not just the response, but it's the recovery, it's embedded as the way we do things. And when you think about things, everyone understands systems now because we can see the domino effects of what's occurring, we can feel it, uh, um, and we're part of that. So I think the, you know, we've also got to kind of understand all well, those systems were always driven by values. And in America, you can see there are very defined sets of values, uh, extrinsic values that are driving behaviors and policies and responses. And in Aotearoa, there are a different set of values. So I think what this has shown is kind of its surface all of those things. And so really, I think it, it'd be fantastic for us to be mature enough to have a, a good conversation around, yeah, kind of like a constitutional conversation around cultural values. They go, well, our economy has always been 
underpinned by cultural ideas of scarcity and yeah, inequality is just normal and that's just part of it and life is like a big monopoly game and you've got to try and grab as much property as you can um and and really well i think this the current crisis has shown is it's just not sustainable you know that um that you know the crisis has highlighted uh those weak points in our society and yeah a virus attacks weakness and we can see that you know inequality is like a societal weakness that leaves us all vulnerable so i think um yeah what i'd hope is that we can have that conversation around rather than just say well let, let's privilege the economy to go well what's the purpose of the economy you know is, is it um to support privilege some and you know make sure that some can own a hundred homes and another 99 people just have to pay rent and get locked in poverty versus you know if we privilege cultural values around fairness or orite tanga or rangatira tanga what would uh, an economy look like if it was based around those cultural values what would our education system look like what would our communities look like you know and china does business in a chinese way um you know these are all cultural institutions but i think it's shown that well, that cultural bau hasn't been working that great for everyone and if we are in it together then now's a good time to stop borrowing ideas and to start to come up with some of our own and i think that tone of leadership is sort of set that in terms of cultural values of manakitanga and care of people I think care of the environment and you know aroha and kite whenua is pretty massive and i think we've all been locked into what happens when you're not running around in a car all day and planes aren't flying ahead and all our rivers are getting better you know, why the hell do we want to then go back to the way it was um, that's just stupid so i would hope that that's where we get to is a, a deeper conversation around values around purpose and to go what does it mean to be part of this whenua and you know how can we um build structures and systems and practices and cultures that care better for people and care better for the whenua kia ora um that was unsurprisingly really visionary thank you Eru. um i really hope that that's a conversation we can accelerate here in ototahi um my sense is that that is possible and we need the leadership to recognize that. So my final question is, you know, you do a lot of work in this area every day, um, working to redress um, inequality in particular. Has your work leading towards that hope or dream changed? Is, are you still doing the same thing? Um. I think it's ramped up massively and I suppose if you you know for lack of a better term um, yeah the field I work in is social innovation and how do you use social innovation tools and approaches to tackle deeply complex multi-dimensional intertangled interrelated challenges like inequality or inequity uh, and so um, yes I, I think it's ramped up because we are in a process of change and so all of that normal sort of widget factory you know i'm trying to tune out more widgets faster and cheaper um all of that's kind of got disrupted and to go well how do we handle uncertainty how do we start to figure out what kind of future we want to approach um that's when you kind of have people that are, are used to dealing with uncertainty feel a lot more comfortable and so I think there is a, a real opening and opportunity for thought leadership and then for action. So, you know, how do we get into that mode of think tank and then do tank to just do stuff and to start to change things and trial new ways. And I think as Auto Tahi, yeah, we had that with the quakes where we kind of, we had all that collaboration and innovation afterwards. And then eventually everything kind of snapped back to the way it was. Uh, um, you know, and some of those opportunities, you know, everything kind of regressed a bit for me um, in some places where it sort of went back to the way it was. And I think that there's that opportunity. And if I think if there's one example 
uh, um, which I think has really worked well, has been the bolt environment. We, the Ōtutai say, let, do we want to build a ho a, a, another ancient homage to Victorian England, or do we want uh, our identity to be expressed in a far more nu nuanced way? And so I think, you know, with Ngai Tuahurere, um, with Mai Apu, you know, they've done amazing work and, and, and working in partnership with people to rebuild better. To go, you know, that our cultural faces in the landscape, it reflects who we are today as a broader society. And, and we didn't just return back to the way it was, we did something better and future focused. So I think the kind of templates there, the, the trick is to go, well, yeah, we've learned from that experience. And I think that's a great example of the strengths that mana whenua can bring and building back better and leading forward and collaborative leadership. And I think that's something that's cemented. And when you watch our upoko alongside the mayor, yeah, that's something that won't wind back. Yeah, it's just normal now. But that wasn't normal 10 years ago. So the challenge for Oto Tahi is how do we learn from those successes we've already had, uh, um, but extend them into a whole range of areas. You know. There have been great successes in education with Mataraka Mahanui, Mahanui Kura Taiao and the environment. But how do we also sort of go into deeper levels as well at a societal level, at a cultural values level, uh, in terms of the stories we tell about ourselves and the identity uh, we have as a collective and as within our own tangata whenua, tangata tiriti uh, spaces as well. Eru, it's been really wonderful to hear from you. Thank you so much for making time to talk with us today. So how do people find you or the organisations you work with online? Um, we just have a mightyfeatures.co.nz and um, as soon as you go onto our webpage, you get spammed with join our newsletter, but that's um, how you can stay up to date with what we're up to as well. Cool. We'll include the links in the programme notes for today. It's been such a pleasure talking with you. And thanks to those of you who are watching or listening, we'd love to hear your feedback. Please share your views or vision for Ōtatahi now. We'd love to hear from you. So it's goodbye from Eru. And it's goodbye from me. Ka kite anō. Ka kite anō. <laughs>